Indigenous media has a special responsibility. It, yes, it has a great reach, we've heard that, but the special responsibility is really what is on your shoulders because it's life-changing. Otherwise, you wouldn't see Dr Tom Kalmer's anti-smoking program now beginning to reach Indigenous people largely through Indigenous media as well as the mainstream. And you would not have seen the success of the National Indigenous Ear Health Strategy. Now, Lee Hubber is going to tell us about that. I'll tell you a little of his story. He was a Perth radio man. He helped establish national marketing for the whole Community Broadcasting Association. He then played a similar role with SBS Radio as it rolled out its national network. Lee then set up ING Media, more recently Spots in Space, which does business with about 600 individual media outlets. But when the 35 local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander media organisations wanted to form a partnership to launch the National Ear Health Campaign, Lee became their executive producer. Please welcome Lee Hubber. We are on Gadigal land. I pay respects to their elders, past and present. Today I'm going to speak to you about a case study that demonstrates a new model for communications campaigns to reach Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, this model was most recently used, as Geoffrey intro Jeff introduced, by the Department of Health and Ageing for the National Indigenous Ear Health Campaign. It's a model that suits the content-rich, interactive, authentic, authentic, targeted campaigns that deliver that deeper conversation that all advertisers are looking for across all media platforms at the moment. It also delivers tremendous value for money. The incidence of otitis media, known as sick ears, pussy ear, runny ear or glue ear, is three times greater in Aboriginal communities and Torres Strait Islander communities than the Australian average. In some communities, especially in remote areas, it's as high as 90%. It's misunderstood to such an extent that some people in community think it's hereditary or normal. The truth is that otitis media can be prevented and if diagnosed early, it can be treated successfully. Now, if a child enters their school years hearing impaired, learning will be more difficult, and when they leave school, they will be disadvantaged in the job market. So the National Indigenous Ear Health Campaign truly fits the aspiration of the Closing the Gap strategy and given that the beneficiaries of the campaign are now five years old or younger, the social and productivity benefits for this country and for these communities are going to last 20 or 30 years hence. In 2005, Universal McCann tasked us with establishing a decentralised production partnership campaign for the Department of Health and Ageing for the National Drugs Campaign. I put forward three proposals that proposed production, as they asked for, at various regional areas, brought to Sydney, produced and then sent out again after it had been sanitised. And finally, they convinced me that this large government department in Canberra trusted and wanted to empower community media organisations all over the country to come up with localised solutions for localised campaigns. I was dumbfounded. I, you know, I didn't expect this from large government. Um, the department had consulted widely on this model, uh, and it's a model that would certainly have been considered experimental at the time, especially in government communications, and um, might have been considered brave in the Yes Minister style. Um, a compilation from mater the materials actually from the drug campaign are available at the desk as you leave if you, if you do want a compilation of the best of those materials. 
The Air Health campaign was therefore the third implementation of the model and much more extensive. ING won the tender to be the ex executive producer. And upon winning it, I questioned whether Air Health was really going to generate as much programming material as sex and drugs. Um, I needn't have been concerned. The media understood the prevalence of air disease. Many of them had been personally touched by it and the desire and commitment to do something about it was instant. After an expression of interest prog uh, process, we contracted 35 local media organisations across Australia. And this is what I was talking about before. Look at that extensive coverage. And uh, please factor in the fact that many of these organisations broadcast on some of the largest footprints, not only in Australia, but in the world. So this demonstrates the broad coverage that local community and radio can give to a strategy that requires reach into large metropolitan areas, regional areas, and this vast remote area footprint. So working within guidelines derived from the campaign's formative research, media organisations produced 34 short films, almost 1,500 radio executions, long and short ones. Uh, it was produced in 19 languages, and what was really powerful for the campaign, 146 individual community events uh, at which a lot of the air health message was put out. Um, Actually, we'll roll a, uh, can we roll a video now? Here's a little flavour of what was produced for the campaign. This is my family and these are my ears. In the Aranda language, the word Ilpa means ears. They don't look like much, but our ears are very important. Lenny? Lenny? All of you children, whether you are short or tall, taking care of your ears is most important of all. Make sure you eat some fruit. Common causes uh, are mainly uh, kids getting colds. When they get the colds, the eustachian tubes blocks up, so that then uh, causes a, uh, the fluid behind the ear to not be able to be released, uh, and then we get the infection, and that's in the middle ear part of it. Uh, so mainly colds and, and flus and stuff like that. Ibi mimi wero mola ngonjongo edi ngonjago. Organisations were ambitious in their proposals. Everyone extended themselves by beyond what they would do in their normal day-to-day -day broadcasting. Um, Larakia in Darwin, uh, for instance, produced 312 individual radio pieces. Umiwara in Port Augusta promised for a year two one-hour young mums programmes throughout the year that were not just music, they were uh, interactive with puppet show characters and all sorts of things. Sherberg in Queensland produced their first ever film and, and that really did extend them. The completion rate across 35 media partners was 97.5%. This is a very high result and it speaks to the commitment underlying the challenge to educate the community and save young children from a life of ear disease and hearing impairment. 97.5% um, might be an expectation in normal producers, um, but a lot of these producers had environmental, logistical, cultural, um, recruitment and resource challenges that are never experienced by big city producers. As of the 30th of June,
The campaign had already logged more than 40,000 broadcasts of campaign productions. If it's ever possible to describe traditional media as going viral, then this is it. Um, the material is extensively shared and it's continued to be shared and it will endure. Um, it develops unparalleled value for money for the campaign and improved outcomes for the children. I love this aspect of it. Community events were staged as part of the campaign and they alone were responsible for hundreds of children having their ears checked on site or referred for ear check. Also on Saturday, Noongar Radio's project in Perth was adjudged the best spoken word programming out of the, I think about 400 community radio stations in the country. Other broadcasters are nominated for uh, the Australian Teachers of Media um, Atom Awards. Um, again, Perth is nominated for a Human Rights Award. So these were high quality productions. Um, most of the producers involved now consider them advo themselves advocates for air health. And the producers contacted and involved 292 individuals and organisations. And those organisations, mostly health organisations, are now directly connected to the media so that they can uh, communicate other um, programs of, of importance to the community. And the producers who excelled in this campaign are ready to apply their skills to those other issues in the community. Um, I've got to say the media are enormously proud of what they've produced and achieved with this campaign. Um, the consistently high standard of delivery is testament to the sector's unity of purpose to achieve these outcomes. And remember, they achieved them separately, knowing that they would be seen as a body of work together. So um, it's a great achievement by them. So this model benefits from access to and trust from communities and community people that would never be given to a producer who flew in and flew out. It gives an authenticity and rich content that would be enormously hard to achieve in that centralized production model. And it gives you, if you were to implement it yourselves, um, some insurance that what is produced will be culturally appropriate. And I think anyone who's tried to produce centrally for an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander audience knows how incredibly laborious it can be to check your materials, to check that you haven't stepped the wrong way. Um, I think the best thing about this campaign is that it worked, um, that the model's been proven three times, and it delivers all the outcomes that modern communicators seek in a modern multimedia um, communications campaign. I commend it to you. Thanks.